The Nigerian healthcare system has suffered several downfalls as statistics from the World Bank shows that Nigeria accounts for 14% of all annual maternal deaths worldwide, second only to India, who stands at 17%. In spite of Nigeria's strategic position in Africa, the country is greatly underserved in the healthcare sector. Health facilities are inadequate, especially in rural areas. On this week's edition of the program, we take a look at the nation's health sector. there. Welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Gloria Umezuki. The World Bank observed that Nigeria accounts for more than 900,000 women and children who die every year from largely preventable causes. Well, similarly, the nation accounts for 13% of all global deaths of children under the age of five. Again, second only to India at 21%. Well, this week's edition of the program looks at the government's Saving One Million Lives project. But first, what are the stories that made headlines during the week in the nation's capital? President Muhammad Buhari has challenged the nation's judiciary to see through the initiative of the Chief Justice of Nigeria to speed up trials of corruption and financial crimes. President Buhari said this when he opened the biannual All Judges Conference, which took place at the National Judicial Institute in Abuja. For the judiciary, the public expects fairness, impartiality, and speed in the administration of justice. Regrettably, court cases can drag on for years and years, sometimes decades without a resolution. I need only mention land cases in Lagos to illustrate my point. Furthermore, there are huge backlogs of cases waiting to be dispensed, especially at appellate levels. Reform of the judiciary should start at eliminating these seemingly endless delays in certain what to the laymen are uh, apparently simple cases. The Vice President Professor Yemiu Shibajo is advocating the need for international collaboration among investors and policy makers towards financing the development of aviation infrastructure. Well, speaking of the Third World Aviation Forum, organized by the International Civil Aviation Organization, Professor Oshibajo explains that such international collaboration will help to address the infrastructure deficit in the aviation sector. The evidence is that it is difficult for aviation stakeholders and even states to access financing to build or rehabilitate airports, telecommunications equipment, meteorology, infrastructure, cargo warehouses, etc. And so there is no better opportunity than this conference for a thorough engagement on the whys and wherefores, but more importantly, the practical steps that are required to ensure that African aviation is not left behind in the growth story of world aviation. It was drama at the residence of the former Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, Ambassador IOK, and that of the former Director General of the Department of State Services, Mr. Ekpeyong Ita, as operatives of the DSS refused the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission from arresting both men. However, the chairman of the anti-graft agency is insisting that nobody is above the law and both men have questions to answer. The law must take its course. Nobody is above the law. So, uh, that, that, nobody is above the law. That suggests that you are going back for another attempt, sir. I'm telling you, nobody is above the law. Thank the law must take its course. Thank you very much, sir. And if there is no offence, we don't go for it. There must be reason, strong reason before we went for that thing. So never, never. I'm not distracted. I'm not discouraged at all. I, do you have it's not yet over anyway. Do you have sufficient evidence for your actions, sir? No, we don't go. We don't go out for for the sake of going out. We must have a strong reason why we went. 
So definitely I'm not discouraged at all. President Mohamed Buhari has vowed to invoke the relevant laws where necessary to obtain information from MDAs, banks and companies to recover stolen assets. The president made the pledge when he inaugurated the Audit Committee on Asset Recovery at the State House. The decision to inaugurate this Audit Committee on the recovery and management of stolen assets within and outside Nigeria today is therefore the next step in ensuring that all returns filed by the various agencies are accurate and consistent with actual recoveries made. The committee, in essence, is therefore expected to judiciously undertake an audit of all recovered accounts established by government agencies from the date of opening such accounts up to 10th April 2017. The details of the committee's functions are as set out in your terms of reference. I congratulate all members of the committee on your appointment, which is another opportunity for you all to serve your country. I therefore urge you to perform your duties diligently in the best interests of Nigeria. The Vice President, Professor Yemio Shibajo, is urging member states of the Gulf of Guinea Commission to renew commitments and ensure a more effective and vibrant commission. Professor Shibajo appealed to members at the fourth ordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the Gulf of Guinea as Nigeria becomes the new chairman of the commission. Let us renew our commitment to making the Gulf of Guinea Commission more effective and a truly vibrant partner in all our efforts, be they regional, national, or international, to ensure a zone of peace, security, and sustainable development for our countries, our peoples, and other stakeholders in the region. The issue of payment of our financial dues and obligations is crucial to the effective operation and performance of the GGC. Well, former Vice President Al-Haji Atiku Abubakar has resigned his membership of the All Progressives Congress. In a statement issued on Friday morning, Al-Haji Atiku lamented the situation of things in the ruling party. While the People's Democratic Party is throwing its doors widely open for Atiku to come in, the Kaduna state governor described him as a serial contestant. I have heard about uh, what the vice, former vice president said about leaving the APC. We knew he was going to leave in December. Uh, he has left uh, in November, which is good. The earlier he leaves for where he belongs, the better. Uh, he has changed political parties a few times. There, there is nothing surprising. Before the 2019 elections, if situations change and he thinks he can get the ticket in APC, he will come back. That's, that's what he has done a few times. So I have nothing to say other than uh, what uh, people say in Hausa Allah Rakataki Guna. Being a founding father of PDP, and because we have, we have an umbrella that is big enough to accommodate everybody anytime, the PDP is a free party. It was conceived to be a party for all Nigerians, irrespective of religion, ethnicity, geopolitical uh, divisions. It was a party for all Nigerians to accommodate everybody. Therefore, our doors are wide open for him to come back to his, to his home. This is the home. Without any preconditions.